Monday is here and it is a work day. The yard is absolutely covered in clover and needs to be mowed. And we are going to work on this garden bed today. I'm resetting this bed. The humidity and heat has hit Middle Tennessee and things are starting to bolt. So we're gonna replant that today with some bush beans. Today is a work day. So come join us and see what we're doing. So as you can see, I came in here this morning and I just cut off all the lettuce that was remaining. We have been eating fresh out of this bed, oh my goodness, since like March, I believe. So we have gotten our fair share of lettuce for salads and there, the peas here, I just planted on the side and they trailed over. It wasn't enough to like preserve or anything, but it gave us a really good harvest for fresh eating. It's still starting to set some new blossoms, but they're starting to look really like ragged and just kind of shriveled. So it's time for them to go. Arugula, lettuce, stuff like that has gone to seed. So we're gonna chop all of this off, except for the stuff in the back here. Like I intentionally planted this higher stuff in the back and I'm gonna let it as long as it wants to bloom. This is some kale. The Swiss chard is tucked in here. And once everything's cut out of here, that is really gonna shine. And that will produce well into the summer. So there's a couple different ones in there. So once all of this gets cut away, that's gonna take off. And then I'll plant this side here with bush beans. And if it falls over the side, that's okay too. While in the process of getting everything together, I realized the chickens had spilled their water. So this is the reality of garden chores. If it's not children, it's chickens. <laughs> so I'm gonna take care of them first and then we'll get started. There's my superheroes ready for work day. <laughs> hey, I have a job for your work day. Can you go rinse that off? And then I need you to fill it up with chicken feed. You wash off the lid. And I'll fill it with <laughs> Hello, around the house fans. This is Supergirl. Actually, secretly Rachel. Fill it with chicken feed. Dude, you're strong. Rachel, me... the chick. She's holding him back. Do you want me to help you or you got it? Think. <laughs> the first thing I'm grabbing is just like maybe a couple inches of some compost topsoil to put on top of that bed just to kind of amend it a little bit. And you all, <laughs> I am literally pulling it out of our woods. So I have this giant pile. I don't know how good it'll show up on camera of the last seven years, all of my dead plants that I pull out of the plant, plant, all of the dead plants I pull out of the garden that are not diseased, I throw in this pile. So it's slowly broken down over the years and this is the first year I'm kind of digging underneath and I'm pulling out some dirt from there and it's beautiful. Lots of worms, I'm watching out to make sure I don't get any slugs or if I get a shovel full of like pill bugs, I don't want those. But I'm gonna fill up, not fill up, I'm gonna put some in this wheelbarrow and we're gonna take that up to the race bed. So you can see, it's pretty nice. This is Supergirl behind the camera, if you couldn't tell. So the first thing in overturning this bed is I'm gonna take my pruners and I'm gonna go through and all of the small lettuces, I'm gonna chop at the base and I'm just gonna drop them because that is gonna create compost in that bed. It'll feed the worms and all the lovely things that live in the soil. The larger stuff, I'll still clip at the base, but I'll give that to my chickens and so that my, my roots for my bush beans can really spread out. Um, without having a large chunk of debris. But the smaller stuff will get chopped and dropped. So you can see I am just cutting them off of the base. Some of the smaller stuff I'm just letting go. The bigger stalks I'm just throwing in a, bas in a bucket for the chickens. So we're just gonna keep going through here and chopping and dropping the smaller stuff, taking the bigger stuff.
So this bed is finished. Can I sit in the water barrel? Uh, I'm not sure. This bed is completely cleared now and I'm gonna put that dirt on top of this. So I just left the stuff on the edge. This is parsley. It'll kind of flow and hang. This is some kale. This will probably give me a little bit more time to harvest from. Um, before it bolts, we'll see how long. This area does get some shade, so that will help this area. And then this again is kale, but they are, they do have some cabbage loopers on there. I need to take care of some Swiss chard. There are, <laughs> as I was taking out the lettuce, there was just so many ground cherries hidden like all over this bed. I had one plant in here last year that hung over the side and it just seeded like crazy. And then I'm leaving my nasturtiums. This is just a pretty vine that overhangs on the other side that I'll leave for pretty. Oh, I forgot a pea plant there. So now let's get this thing amended and planted. As I'm putting this in here, I'm just gonna check to make sure I'm not throwing a bunch of slugs on my garden. <laughs> this is the thing, when I, when I dig fresh dirt, I can't keep the kids out of the dirt. So if you wouldn't have soil that you could pull from your own backyard, you could totally go get some really good compost. Um, I recommend not skimping on compost, like get a good quality organic compost um, and just amend the bed that way. Or you could even like top it off with a really good potting soil. Happy Frog is my favorite. It would only take like a couple inches to throw on top. I actually have some left that I might just put in the row that I'm planting the bush beans in. But you don't have to have dirt on your own land in order to grow food. Like you can buy it. Just make sure you're buying good quality stuff. So this is what it looks like now with all the dirt. We got a fresh surface to sow. And he is playing in the remainder of the dirt. Kids don't need a lot of toys, guys. <laughs> they just need some dirt. <laughs> well, let's talk about what I'm gonna be putting in there. Um, I already said I'm be putting some bush beans in there. Bush beans, basically, they don't like climb, so they remain like a bush. It's a green bean but they're great for containers. I also plant them in my main garden because they produce all of their fruit usually at once. So within like a two to three week span, you're gonna get the bulk of your harvest and you'll get beans here and there before that and after that. But I like that you get the bulk of your harvest all at once because it's great for freezing. I can do it all at once, stock our freezer. So bush beans, I plant all summer long <laughs> until I can't anymore throughout spaces that I empty. Um, I am trying a new one. My favorite usually is Blue Lake bush beans, but I'm trying a new one this year. This is called a Gold Rush bean. And I got this at a seed swap and I thought it was really pretty because it's yellow. So I figured it'd add like a pop of color up here. And we're gonna plant these. And this one says about one seed every four inches. So because I have this, I am going to throw on a little bit of this. Um, this is the ocean one, I believe. So this is just gonna add a little bit of nutrients. It's gonna help my seeds get a good start. This is not necessary um, if you don't have it. So don't feel like you have to have all the things. A seed planted is, a, is better than no seed planted. So at least you have the possibility of getting a harvest rather than no harvest. So don't be afraid to try things and just see what happens. We're gonna do just one down the middle here. And this is a great tool, by the way, if you don't have it. It's a Hari Hari, has measurements on it, which I love. I don't think I can do this one-handed. <laughs> and I'm gonna put one every like four inches. chickens. Still playing. Ladies want some treats? Ladies want some treats?
I get so camera shy when I see the neighbors out. <laughs> I'm giving these pea scraps to the chickens as well. You know, one thing I really gleaned wisdom from this weekend at the Homestead Festival was just hearing everyone's different opinions and what they do and just realizing like find what works for you. Um, just because someone says to do it a certain way does not mean you have to do it that way. If you have found something that works for you and is providing food for your family and it's growing well, keep doing it. <laughs> Every one climate is gonna be different in different states and different areas. You're gonna have different soil. So if it works for you, do it. If it's not working, then try to find something new. But don't get stuck in this rut of like, well, I heard you have to do this. Just try it and see what happens. Like I think about my ancestors and years ago, they didn't have the internet and all the opinions floating around and they did it and they learned that way. So I encourage you today, to put a seed in the ground and just try it. See what happens.